and here we are welcome back right now uh, I'm going to look at the four section how to conduct a so how to conduct proper research as a freelance consultant so just to make a quick recap from all of the model that I have learned so far so I can relate each one of those topics mention them and to see the, the relationship of all the things that I'm learning and then apply that into the real market especially on Outwork or any other uh, platform right so because right now uh, by making this huge overview uh, from uh, the getting started to building a freelance consulting career by looking at the fundamentals what consulting uh, or what consulting uh, so what consulting is what are the tasks that a consultant does conduct the research analyze the, analyze the data and present the results also what consulting success looks like that you have cash flow uh, meaning is the ability that you have to earn based on the value you provide the flexibility that these lifestyles give you and <clears throat> Uh, the security by having multiple source of income and also I look at the type of projects that you might find here as a consultant strategic where you outline is what, will, what are the goal uh, for their business and you help them reach them goal uh, the improvement when you develop a plan to improve certain areas of operations and the implementation. So this is when you're going to set the strategic and uh, in improvement recommendations you made. Now, then I also look at uh, the consultation or the productivity tips to improve uh, you as a consultant uh, like use time blocking to kind of guide you where are you heading for me in my case that has been very very helpful uh, because here right now uh, what I've what I have done in the last five years okay is that right is keep track each one of my uh, activities okay to kind of guide you and to kind of guide me where I would like to go where I would like to do what I would like to do and also my patterns and how all of that might change in the future and again part of the response to change or following a plan uh, that is one of their statement from the agile manifesto but in any case uh, so yeah after I saw the uh, productivity tips like time blocking uh, find a way to get in the, into the zone uh, avoid distractions, eliminate distractions, uh, do one thing and focus on one thing. So don't do multitasking. Then uh, I look at the for decision making, the Eisenhower matrix allow us is to well things that are important and urgent do that today things that are important but not urgent schedule those that are not important but urgent 
delegate and ultimately don't focus on things that are not important and hurt. Pretty basic. So then uh, I look at the second model on um, getting started as a freelance consultant and here is find understand what is a niche. What are the mistakes to avoid a niche? The uh, platform that you should yeah, that you should align with. The mistake to uh, to avoid when choosing a, or align yourself in a platform. Create your offer. And this is boiled down into find out what is your value statement. What is what is the value that you provide? Because ultimately the client is not paying for the hour you put. It's for the value you provide. And with that, how you can price your offer? Hourly or in a per milestone? The holy grail of uh, consulting business is to have recurring uh, revenue or recurring clients where they pay you for your service uh, such as uh, subscription models, uh, and more often than not, consultants that are having tremendous success, uh, they having a bunch of recurring, pli uh, recurring clients paying for their service. So, I also look at the scope of the work. And how important it is to define that, all right? Here's by on the on the scope of the word define is clear, written deliverables, be huge in communication, and ask how success is going to be mentioned. So then, because a, a great offer is not only a single offer, is a ladder of offering. I look at the value ladder as a guideline of how you can offer your service. So let's say at the bottom uh, or the lowest level of uh, consultation is uh, the or the lowest level of value in your business are the consultation. This is to kind of guide you or if you are the the person that, you, that can provide the value that the client is seeking, if you're able to solve the client problems, uh, and if everything went well, uh, then you can push up the client up the value ladder, meaning is that you can start to ask the client, hey, I would like you to uh, make a product audit, for example, uh, for about $500 and outline is the roadmap based on the client needs and the, the strategy improvement and uh, recommendations you make. So then after that, so you can push up the climb uh, the ladder by mentioning, hey, I will start to offer this a let's say 10 hour package 10 hour package for your consulting uh, to starting to implement your uh, recommendations and ultimately your great offer to the client is a monthly subscription to kind of maintain the product uh, or to provide some security bug fixes in the context of a software development, right? So that might be one of them. You know, I might, that might be one of them. So Again, that value ladder is can serve as a guideline of how you can start to create your offer. And then I look at the service agreement. And here is what you're going to outline uh, is the scope of the work, the project length, 
or overview, project duration, the uh, terms and terminations, the compensations, and agreement. And the whole idea here is that never guarantee any result of the client. Simply put that you're going to provide the best possible uh, effort to give their, so to provide that, simply put that you're going to provide your best effort. Mm. Simply put that you're going to make your best effort to provide the high, a high quality of product. And is it, uh, <laughs> what, uh, okay, come on. <laughs> Simply put, that you're going to make your best effort to provide a high quality product. So, then I also look at uh, the another the another thing, especially for compensation and the payment terms, compensation. That is. Anything that is outside of the scope of the work, uh, the client and if the client wants to add that, they need to pay for that. Okay. So in this service agreement, this is to make you look much more professional, all right. And after all, I'm looking is at how to be a one-person business right now. And how to and how you are able to manage all of your uh, or or at least how to start getting managed yourself as a business in this 2023. Uh, so okay. Now, then I uh, look at the third model. Place where you can find and land high paying consulting clients. Uh, so, once you know what consulting business is, uh, you align yourself at profitable niche and you create your value. Now it's time to put data practice to get real feedback from the market. I also look at the mistake to avoid uh, when starting out to find and land high paying consulting clients, like focusing too much on your portfolio. Run, uh, running pay ads and not focusing on your skill because ultimately what the client what is going to the, the client will use your reputation and your review to decide if they want to work with you so then I look at place where you can uh, or especially when you're getting started uh, be transparent Adjust your price, especially if you're new to the field, and tell the client, hey, even though that I know that I'm new to the field, I am driven to provide exceptional results to build my image as a consultant. And always reach to some sort of a beneficial, reach to a mutual beneficial agreement. Now, also look at places where you can start finding a client, such as uh, Upwork or your existing network. This is very highly contextual because, for example, in Afghanistan or Venezuela, going with the with your existing network might be or might not be healthy. I also look at the importance of any time that you're having a potential sales or prospect, have a record of that because once you get started to get busy, it is important to know how to do that in a CRM, Customer Relationship Management, allows you to do that. For example, using HubSpot, where you can see uh, each one of your client interaction and your cell funnels. Also, uh, you can do a 
email tracking prospect, among other things, right? The whole idea is that you are here with a CRM and are building business relationship. And that's one of the core value here. Then, uh, yeah, that's one of the core value here. Also, I look at, yeah, yeah, Jesus, organize your ideas earlier. <laughs> organize your ideas. So what you want to say is important. So after I mention is the uh, look at your existing network and use CRM such as Hotspot. Also, you can look for place to find clients which has employment side. This might not 100% align to what you, to your goals, but it can help you to kind of guide you, uh, kind of get your feet wet, put your foot in the uh, put your foot in the door, and then down the line you can get better results uh, or starting to build your image as a consultant. Also, the consultation uh, tips for landing more additional clients, uh, such as, remember that this is a numbers game. And always ask yourself, what am I doing right now? Am I putting, a, I am, uh, yeah, what am, what am I doing right now? Am I putting, Jesus, what am I doing right now? And I am putting myself in the best possible position to move forward. And also, show your face. It is important to create a clear distinction between your digital avatar from who you are. And when it comes to consultation sell tips to land more uh, clients, we have is like we listen more. So most freelancers go on and talk about themselves why they're a good fit for the job that they are applying. Any previous experience that they have uh, that are similar to the job that they are applying to, and they go on and talk about all of that that they forgot to mention or to. So they forgot to actually listen to the client. Listen to what they say, read their body language, uh, reading between lines, because the more you can use all of those fact findings to kind of guide you where the conversation is heading, and from there, land more additional clients. I also look at the you speak, especially if you are uh, eager to start working with a particular client that you want to. Use the solution selling process instead of focusing on the project, focusing is on the solution that you bring to them. So, with that, the client needs to understand that they're going to pass through a transformation when they work with you. And this transformation is you guiding them through their problems to solve them. And the ad free value. This doesn't mean that you're going to work for the client for free or at all. In fact, go above and beyond what your competition are doing. So separate you from the competition. Uh, and you might think or you might tell to the client, hey, I already put this together for you. Can I show you uh, what? Yeah, I already put this together for you. Uh, can I show you, or can you tell me what you think about it? And the other is, for example, here, this, okay? So what I'm doing right now, especially by re recording all of this video, is doing that, is put myself 
apart, so I'll set myself apart for the competition by recording what am I doing here, the old topic and thing and stuff that I'm learning right now, specifically uh, related to business, okay? And over time, you're going to see the leverage of that. And the leverage is, so the more volume you produce here, by recording is through all of these videos and to improve your process, meaning improve your communication skill, analytical, uh, and also uh, your human interaction with others, okay? This is a slowly learning process that it will help you in the future vastly because when someone else comes to you and tell hey what you have done in the last two or three years hey check out for my finance check out for my learning finance know the gs and business series in my youtube channel and again this is part of your portfolio uh, that you're building here so this is one of the new ways for wealth creation and for yourself to tell others, hey, yes, I already learned all of this stuff uh, because I, I generally develop an interest to that and also that I align myself to the market, you know, rather than any ideology uh, that is popular or mainstream at my current time, or at any future time, I'm aligned a little bit to the market and also uh, listen to all of this ideology. Where are the points that they bring here, right? And contrast them, their, their ideas. But also, following is the market. Uh, why? Because at the end of the day, no one will be responsible for you, no one will take care of you as you do, and when you are when you as when you're getting older, no one will really care what's wrong with you. So it is up to you to put your shit together and kind of develop a skill set that provide value to others and to see you as someone that is valuable. So, for example, uh, from uh, older societies, right, uh, or more primitive societies, uh, where the elders are, where the, where the elders possess all of this knowledge, so they are kind of like Wikipedia for the entire community, okay, of course, they have a value in their society and that's one of the reasons why most of the, uh, the people in the community uh, they bind together to uh, or they getting closer to them and they protect them after all they provide is this kind of value for that wisdom and knowledge uh, but right now in this modern era most of the elders, they are barely provide that. And that's one of the reasons why uh, I will argue that most family tends to forget about their elders. Because if they're not able to provide value with their wisdom or uh, knowledge, it's like, and also, uh, they don't want to do anything to slowly improve their process. I get, no, I know. Their physical conditions or, or uh, the physical limitations, uh, the biology of that is actually the, <laughs> the true uh, oppressive here. So, yes. But in any case, this is just a thought that comes out of my mind. 
because I was looking at uh, the add free value here and that it is important to set yourself apart not only for the competition but you as an individual you need to figure out what the fuck you really want to do right based on the reality that you're experiencing and always dream so as i like as i like to say with the foot on the floor and your mind on the sky so always dreaming with your foot in the floor so uh, then with the um, consultation sell tips right even though that <coughs> that how the battle is to tackle objections and this is uh, helpful so over how the battle is to tackle objections and the more you're able to listen to the client be on point and to figuring out what the real objection is you can tell them the truth that matters, that you are the solution to their problems. And to do that, uh, there is something called the solution selling process that allows you to avoid getting, get burned uh, when you are creating your business. And this is by looking at the prospect journey Again, this is look out for all the, the different prospects on sell leads. Uh, you start to reach out to them to kind of get to kind of get your. This is when you start to reach out out to them to kind of uh, get their attention. Once you have a list of all these prospect uh, or clients. Then you qualify them by asking is the proper questions to decide if they are a good fit for you. Then you do a demon discovery call and this do even a more fact findings about if they want to work with you or it's just going to end right there so I can move on to the next project. If the client agree with that, okay, and tell you, hey, good, send me some some information about what you're gonna do. This is when you compile all of your experience and you send a proposal and add value. You might outline several different options uh, to them that they can go with. So the whole idea is that by using this solution selling process. Is something important especially once you get started to get busy which is a good thing if you're prepared to and then I look at these uh, freelance freelancing and uh, some freelancing websites versus uh, personal invoice uh, how you can create your own invoice so for example Freelance websites like Freelance or Upwork, Fiverr, or uh, from personal invoice, whether you use PayPal or QuickBooks or Soho. Now, the whole idea of this, okay? So, once you have land some additional client, do you know how to send a proposal? You reach to some sort of agreement. Okay, so when I, so once you land a, once you land some some additional client, you know how to send a service agreement. You know how to secure payment, which is another uh, thing, especially related to how to invoice client or how to secure client payments, because most of the times freelancers go on. Uh, here and there and they 
make mistakes uh, and you want to take control from it and you want to take control of it from the start so the dissolution of the process uh, and the invoice process is by get this service agreement document signed secure the payment based on agreement okay even though if you tell or you offering the client to work hourly or monthly get that secure first okay? for example if you're providing is uh, an hourly rate you might get uh, payments weekly or bi-weekly or if you are providing is per milestone you want to ask to the client and um, 50% upfront to start to developing, to start to uh, working on their project. So, once you land some additional clients, you know how to send service agreement, uh, and you know how to secure payment clients, you started to gain some progress. Uh, you have to remember that the ultimate goal is to scale your business. You scale to multiple clients. And this is how you grow your business and you will turn into a steady flow of income. So because once you have multiple clients to pay you in multiple different companies, different industry, let's say, that will help you to diversify your revenue and you will have and you also have multiple sources of income. So diversification of revenue from having multiple uh, clients from different companies or different industry, and you also have multiple source of income. So one key to scale your business is simple. Allegedly, delivering the top quality product, remember that your reputation is everything, and people spend on things that they have trust and like. Referrals are the key to grow. Yeah. Log everything as you do, especially in your business using a CRM. And if you struggle with it, remember that it's all about. Remember that is that is all about getting leads. So remember to get some business leads. Show them value, build up your reputation, and repeat. So with that, I'm going to wrap up this huge overview. Uh, it was something very, very important to understand and to recap. And also to improve my communication skill as well. So with that, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.